Could either or both of you guys explain what happened to, to start the brawl at the end of the game? Yeah, you know, that's what you're going to see from uh, Xavier in Cincinnati. And we, was, we got disrespected a little bit before the game. Guys calling us out. We're a tougher team. We're grown men over here. We got a whole bunch of gangsters in the locker room. Not thugs, but tough guys on the court. And we went out there and zipped them up at the end of the game. That's our motto, zip them up. And that's what we just did to them. How were you disrespected before the game? Well, you know, I guess uh, one of those, I was hearing on Twitter or whatever, one of those guys called me out, said I wouldn't start on um, their team or whatever the case may be. Then those guys saying they were better than us. But you don't talk, you don't talk before the game. It, it always go down. Well, you talk after the game. And you let, you, you let your player on a uh, court talk for you. You said that's what you're going to see from Xavier and UC. We really want to see that. You know what I'm saying? It's toughness. You know, you can't. Well, both, group, both groups are tough guys. And sometimes they get out of control. And you saw that before in the past. That wasn't your first time seeing a fight on the court. If you've been covering the cross-time shoot up. Well, you uh, got your first one. Two, why not just hang on? And you guys were you know, winning by such a large margin. Just finish it off and celebrate that way. Because yeah, at the end of the day, if somebody put their hands in your face or try to do something to you, where we from, you're going to do something back. You know, we're not going to sit there and get, get our face beat in by somebody like Yancey Gates or somebody. You don't let that happen. I, would have been, I wouldn't be able to do media if I didn't protect myself. You know what I'm saying? Was this happening throughout the whole game? No. At the end of the game, you've seen the score. So, of course, they're going to try to get some retaliation some way, somehow. And they try to do something, but it don't work like that. Two, two on the, after the last possession, after you scored, you came down and you were talking in the general direction of either Gwen or the Cincinnati bench, what were you saying at that point? Yeah, you know, I was just saying it's my city right here. I'm cut from a different cloth. None of them guys on that team is like me. So I don't understand. I felt disrespected for them guys to come at me and talk like that. So I let the whole staff over there and I let all them players know that none of them is like me in the, in the city. What happened after that? Uh, that's when it started. What stuff you yeah, I really don't remember after that. I know I think one of them guys put their hands on my face or whatever and then you see my team going to come protect me. I was in front of their bench by myself and you saw the rest of my team come over there and protect me. He good. Everyone's all right. Do you think, Two Cheeks, do you think this is a statement that says that you guys might be one of the toughest teams in America? We've been proven to be the America. toughest team in America. Well, one of the toughest teams. I don't take nothing away from Cincinnati or any other team in the country, but we just proved every since our whole seven games that we're a tough team. We don't never let down. We're going to keep playing, and we ain't scared of nobody. The toughness isn't like a, a fight or something. It's what we do every possession, how we play defense, how we stay in the game when a team make a run, that's all toughness. A fight after the game isn't toughness. No, that's not tough. Now, back, back to the game. What did you guys do? Because it seems like about eight minutes ago, you started settling on defense. You went on like a 22-4 to four run. What changed that really allowed you guys to get into it to really start this blowout? We, you know, really, it's not about what we changed. It's about what we kept doing. You know, we, we knew that them guys didn't have a deep bench, so we just kept wanting to wear them. We wanted to wear them down and try to make plays for each other and to keep attacking them, and that's what we did. We wore them down. Guys, are you concerned at all about how you'll be viewed after this? I mean, it's going to be replayed. The, the game didn't finish. Um, are you concerned at all about what that'll do for what people think of Xavier basketball? Um, I remember when I think I was a freshman in college, we uh, had like a little scuffle with UC at UC. Then uh, I guess day and a half court, it was a little riot or whatever. So. That's, this is a part of basketball sometimes. Things like this happen, so we're just going to continue to play and try to win games. And, and y'all amp it up so much, it's like y'all make it an animosity. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't do this. Like, this is a rivalry game, like, which I expect from us. It's going to be a tough game every time we go out there and play UC. It's going to be physical. It's going to be an emotional game. That's why everybody came out and watched it. That's why our, that's why our students camped out, because they know it's going to be an intensity game. Are you saying that the media is the reason why that's happening? No, I'm saying the media is the reason why the game is so, you know, amped up and it's a rivalry game. Did you figure if you could shut them down on the perimeter that you could beat them? Well, it was all the way around. I don't think we really shut them down. A few of those uh, perimeter guards between Kilpatrick and Dixon had a double figure, so. Yeah, but uh, they were still able to. Um, get a lot of like easy shots at the rim on curls and things like that. But we remember the feeling that we had last year. We had to live a whole year with knowing that those guys didn't let us get into our offense. They out-rebounded us, and we, and we didn't like pressure the ball. So this year, we just wanted to make it a little different, do things that we didn't do last year to try to change the game this year. Do you feel bad at all to get 
game ended like that? Not just anybody's fault, but just bad that it ended that way? Yeah, you know, it, sometimes it takes away from what we really did on the court, but I, I feel bad that it ended like that. But sometimes things happen, and you got to uh, you gotta move forward. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to move forward and try to forget it. They're probably going to play this on ESPN for a couple of days, but in a few days, you know, everyone will forget. Are you all concerned about maybe full-scale suspensions on both sides after the fight? Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, you, you definitely don't want none of your players not on the court during the game. So if, if, they, if it comes down to that, then we'll definitely – we won't be happy with it, but we'll have to deal with it. And uh, hopefully nothing, nothing major happens out of this. Did this game simply turn on you guys able to start making shots and get to the hole? Because it seemed like early on it was frust- it was fluctuating. No one made outside shots. I think Mark, you made one, two, you came down. And next, and now everything opened up offensively. Well, uh, you know, the game is just different. It's a lot of it's anxiousness in the game, and guys are real like excited and things like that. So, you know, it takes a while to settle in. The score was very low at the beginning, and then, we just had to uh, just let, keep letting our offense flow and we'll make shots and just running things through. How do you feel about the performance of uh, Dez and Kenny today? Stepped up. They stepped up big time. They came ready to play, especially <clears throat> Dez for this being his first crosstown shootout. He, he was really out there playing really hard, and, and Kenny had a lot of big plays down the stretch for us. So them two came really ready to play, and, and we needed them today. Well, I'll start with the part that everybody's going to ask about, and that is the end of the game, the last, um, you know, the scuffle. Um, number one, I, I would I would first tell you that uh, I'm really disappointed in, in the way um, that both teams conducted themselves down the stretch. Um, it's disappointing. We're all competitors. We all played our hearts out. This game means so much. There's a lot of pressure on both teams to win. And for it to sort of play itself out like it did at the end, I don't know another word other than disappointing. You know, Mick and I have been friends since we were in the fifth grade. And, you know, we're not in the locker room talking about, you know, let's go they're after their throat or anything like that. And the crime of it was for 39 and a half minutes, it was probably one of the cleaner crosstown shootouts in terms of um, – Hard fouls, loose balls. The only technical was given to me on a, on a goaltending call. Um, you know, that's 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 the only word I, I would I would really think um, to use is disappointing at the very end. Doesn't take away from I thought well, it does take away, and it's going to take away, I'm sure, with uh, a lot of what you write. But in my mind's eye, the the way that we played uh, today, uh, we were the better team. And uh, I'm proud of my kids for their effort, their preparation, uh, their will to win. And again, just, just disappointed with the way it ended. Coach, what did you tell your team after the, after the brawl? And will there be any punishments coming down for them? Well, there'll be punishments. And I have not seen the tape yet. Um, you know, it looked to me like both two and, and um, uh, G-Lon were, were, were jawing back and forth with one another. Um, you know, I thought G. Lon put his hands on two. I thought two responded, and, and and you know, beyond that, I really I couldn't tell you. It was such a melee. I was just trying to you know, like the rest of the Xavier administration and coaches, and the rest of the UC uh, administration and coaches, we were just trying to, you know, try to separate the players, and it's it becomes chaotic in there. And, um, but uh, you know, I just I told our guys exactly what I told you. I'm a very honest coach. I was disappointed with how it ended, and um, I'll leave it at that. The two players who were in here, Lions and um, and uh, two, didn't seem to be disappointed in the way they seemed to relish in it. They seemed to be proud. Of it. Uh, did you get that feeling from them when you talked to them? No, I did Some not. Of the things they said, I think you'd be surprised to hear. One of them said we're a bunch of thug gangsters. I think he said. How do you feel about that? No, I mean, I think uh, those two kids are, 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 are warriors on the basketball court. I think they're competitors. Um, I think at times they, they probably don't you know, represent themselves uh, with their use of words real well. But, um, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, is disappointing the way it ended. But I'm not necessarily uh, going to sit up here and, and, and tell you that I feel like two of Mark are bad kids. They're great kids. they got big hearts. They wanted to win this game more than more than any game we've played all year, and um, you know how they might present themselves in front of a microphone. They're not perfect. 
Was Kenny okay? He had some blood on his face. Looked like. Um, doctors still have to look at him. You know, he's he's got a, uh, um, you know, he's got a black and blue eye and you know some blood, and you know, we'll see if if there's any other damage other than you know a bruise. I don't know yet. Was anyone else hurt as as much as he was? I guess. I don't think so. No. What did that do to really fall down? Seemed like the game changed out nearly with the first half. Did that do anything different? I mean, what what changed for you guys that really helped you get on that spurt? Well, I, you know, they're really um, their guards um, their guards really make it tough on you because they, they run that little pin down action. And, and I thought early in the game we were chasing it too much and allowing you know both Dixon and Kilpatrick to get in the lane. And even if they miss their shot, it usually puts your bigs in a, in a really tough position to, to defensive rebound. You know, puts our Bigs in a, in a bad, bad way, and we started shortcutting those screens a little bit more in the, in the uh, after the first ten minutes of the game. Really being there on the catch with their guards, and, and I thought um, when Yancey got the ball inside, I thought we did a good job of crowding him and really making it tough. And, and that was the whole key. And then obviously keeping them off the glass, and you know they get 16 offensive rebounds, and I don't know whether that's good or bad, but they're just. You feel like every time you play a Cincinnati team or you watch them on tape, they're just absolutely relentless when it comes to the glass. Can you talk about how Kenny played, had 13 and 13? Seemed like he was catching the ball closer to the basket today in a position to finish. Yeah, I really, um, I give him a lot of credit for um, trying to establish himself closer to the basket. You know, part of Kenny's struggles has been he's caught it 8, 10 feet away from the basket, and, and now he's in a position of, of weakness and his position of, of, of passing the ball after two or three dribbles towards the basket. We really wanted to teach him how to carve out space even more than we've been. And to have a guy like Aaron Williams, who's been with us here for a couple of weeks, be able to, to help Kenny with that and then the rest of our post players. Uh, Kenny was big today and, and did a great job. Chris, with the suspension rules as they are, the problems with leaving the bench, how concerned are you about being able to put a squad on the floor for Oral Roberts? Well, I don't, you know, honestly, Mike, I don't know all the rules. I know more NBA rules when that stuff, uh, you know, it, it comes out. So, um, you know, I am concerned. We'll figure out, you know, what, what suspensions uh, occur and, and um, you know, we'll move forward after they uh, do their due diligence and look at the film and, and, and make their decisions. I think our, our the way we played certainly um, was probably our best game of the, of the year. And I thought uh, we were we were better on offense. We attacked more. We were a team that was faster from defense to offense. I think our defense has been pretty consistent all year. Um, but uh, I thought we took a big step forward in our play today, and uh, it was good to see. Chris, do you, do you think this series should be played in the future? Oh, man, it's a tough one. I sure hope so. I really, um, you know, I'm clouded right now because we, we can't end games like this. I mean, it's just um, it's irresponsible by both programs, and um, I don't know. What did, uh, what did the officials say to you and Coach Cronin right at the beginning of the second half? I mean, was that related to the teams kind of getting tangled up on the way out to the locker rooms? Um, he was just addressing that there was there was uh, one kid for, for them talking, one kid for us talking, and if either one of them talked any more to, to one another, that they were going to issue a technical. And, um, you know, both Coach Cronin and I handled it, and, and neither technical, a technical was not given for the rest of the game. How big of a deal was this game for two, do you think, just considering his um, how he played last year and maybe some of the trash talk leading up to this game? It's just a big game for, for our entire program, as it, as it is for them. You know, we, um, you know, it's not for personal redemption. It's for us playing a really good Big East team, a team that uh, you know, we had to beat to continue to, um, you know, to, continue to be a team that I, I think has a chance to to really make some noise as the season goes along. We just wanted to show steady improvement, be the more aggressive team. I made a mistake last year of being a team that um, didn't really attack their point guard. You know, we played really soft in the point guard to help on curls and stuff, and that was my fault. So it has nothing to do with um, any trash talk leading up to it. Um, it's just all about uh, who plays harder.